Bibles tonight, uh, turn with me to the, the book of Isaiah, chapter number 41. Isaiah 41, and we'll read uh, verses 17 through 20. Isaiah 41, verses 17 through 20. And say, Jimmy, you've done, you've done tilted the church. Look at here. You remember last week, I believe it was, that side was. So you, you've, uh, let's see, you've, you've, you've helped them double up over here. Yeah. Uh, let's read verse 17 through 20. When, when the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shed a tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together, that they may see, and know, and consider, and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for you allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. And Lord, uh, we ask blessings upon each home and that's, that's here. And Lord, uh, as we look to your word tonight, open our hearts up to it. Lord, uh, there are thirsty folks that we rub elbows with each week. And Lord, uh, we, your children, know where the water is at. It, it comes from you. And Lord, may we uh, be resting in your promises that you give in your word, as we talked about some of them this morning. We're going to talk about some more of them tonight. And Lord, uh, just have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we look at verse 17. The poor and the needy are seeking water. I can't help but think about the woman at the well that uh, came. And uh, I believe she came at the, that certain time of day because of uh, her life that she had led, the life that she had lived. And, uh, you know, then, in this sense, wasn't no different than what we have today. People like to talk. And uh, I'm sure that uh, she was... Uh, talked about pretty regularly in the in the town. And so she she came that day not thinking anybody was going to be there. She'd probably been there before. But uh, that day, Jesus was waiting on her. Uh, I'm looking at Isaiah 55 in verse 1. If you'll look over there with me. Just a, mine was just a few pages over. So the poor and needy had come looking for water, and they, they found none. Well, as, we, as I said in my prayer, the source of that water is Jesus. So Isaiah 55, verse 1, Hold everyone, or stop, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, uh, my brothers and I, we, when we get together, sometimes it's two of us at a time, and uh, sometimes it's uh, all three of us, we get to wondering about what Granddaddy would think about the goings-on today. Uh, in particular, now, I stepped out of our kitchen on come here, and I looked down there at a case of uh, water, 40 bottles of it, and I wonder 
what granddaddy would think about buying water. Uh, now, I, I wasn't around when they had to do the, drop the bucket in and, you know, had to bring it back up by hand. But Jimmy, I'm told, mainly I'm told that you could, the water, he had so much water in that well that you could reach down in and touch it. So they, and like I mentioned this morning, we at home had to get somebody to come uh, clean out our well. He never did have that problem. Now his was a hand dug too, but I hardly ever did I ever see him. That he had a concrete uh, thing or a block thing around his uh, well and the pump, and I, I don't think I ever even seen in there because he'd never had any water problem. When they came through asking for if anybody wanted on county water, why does, why does he need county water for? He's got a, they might have had bought, bought water from him. I don't know. But uh, I think he would have wondered about this buying water because he that wasn't in his vocabulary. But the poor and the needy here go seeking. Now, uh, I thought for a long time that uh, maybe somebody going out and seeking some fulfillment in life would not ever hit so close to home as it has. Uh, but I've realized over the last several years it probably has hit every home. I believe there's a God-sized hole in everybody's life, and uh, we can try this, that, and the other. Solomon tried this, that, and the other to try to fill that hole, and he had a lot more means than anybody that I know. He withheld not anything that he desired. If he, if he wanted the latest comedian, hey, they were brought on payroll. If he wanted the best singers, hey, they were Somebody, so-and-so's having a concert over there. Well, are they any good? Well, you hire them and bring them on in. Uh, but he realized this. It was all empty. It was all vain. And in the end of the, the book of Ecclesiastes, he wrote this. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Serve God and keep his commandments. Because that is the whole duty of of man. But these folks, where, where are they, first of all, where are they going to find the water? Maybe they heard that, uh, hey, uh, so and so's got water over there. Well, let's go over there. Well, it's dry. Something that really sticks out in my mind about the life of Elijah is that at one point in his life, God told him to go live down, down there by the brook. And he went and lived by the brook. Enjoyed the water that was there. It was not raining. He had prayed that there wouldn't be no rain, and it wouldn't rain. Three, three and a half years. And he lived there by that brook. And it's kind of like my pond these days. Justin, I went out about two weeks ago. And there was about 12 to 15 ducks sitting on my pond. Now they'd be walking on dirt if they was in my pond. It's dry. And so these people here, the poor, the needy, they came looking. One writer says the, the needy here are the most hopeless of all mortals. They came looking for water. But look what it says there in verse 17. There is none. There is none. Their tongue, it says there in verse 17, faileth for thirst. What do they got to do? They got to cry out to the Lord. And what does he say he's going to do? He said, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. You see, he's provided the way. His son Jesus, matter of fact, said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, the life, 
No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, let's go back to Granddaddy. Born in 1908. Passed away in 1996. He saw a lot of changes. I was at Mama's funeral. I know that uh, he had his kids go out, throw rocks out of the road where the horse and buggy could go, and then go back and throw them same rock back in the road where the car could go. He saw a lot of changes. One change he didn't see. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. So they've come looking for water. They can't find any. I don't think it's going to be any use of them drilling a whale, hand digging a whale. Don't think it's any use of them going down living by the brook. They need to turn to the Lord. He says there, I will answer them. Verse 18, if you look with me to verse 18, what's he going to do? Well, kind of like what Jesus uh, told the woman at the well. said, you ask me of the water, and I'm never going, you're never going to thirst again. And she thought, well, hey, I don't have to come back and carry this water back. Give me, give me some of that water. And then, then she began to realize that he wasn't talking about the water that was in that well. That he was talking about the water that springs up to everlasting life. One writer says, uh, I will answer them. There is no answer to such a thirst anywhere else but in God himself. God's the only answer. He loved us enough to give his son Look unto me and be you saved. God's answer is near when our absolute failure is recognized and confessed. So, first of all, I still do this. They raise their hand. Yeah, what do, you, what do you need? I need help with this. Could you come help me? And I always say, that's the first step to recovery. You've got to realize you need help. These people realized, I'm thirsty. And they went to their probably their same places, maybe turned the same faucet on they've been turning on, maybe went back to the same well they've been going to, nothing. But when they come to him, what is he going to do? Same thing he did for us when we came to him. Verse 18 says, I will open rivers in high places. You say, well, can he do that? Why can't he? Uh, Jenna, was me and you went on that private tour behind the scenes at Disney or was it me and Anna? Me and Anna went, to, uh, she wanted to go through that Epcot, I think it's Epcot thing, and uh, where they grow tomato plants just hanging out in midair, no soil anywhere around them. They, they shoot water to them every now and then. And so uh, in the process of going through that with her, I read this and I thought, now, that right there ain't right. No. Now, you know, I, I, I learned in science class that that ain't right. You say, well, what, what did you read? It said there that all the water that will ever be needed is already here. It cannot be made again. And I'm sitting there thinking, if I took two hydrogens and added the oxygen. They taught me in science class that's going to be water. So I'm thinking some scientists wrote that, but God can change things. He can make a river where there was none. He can make a rainforest where it was dry and barren. That's what verse 18 tells me. I will open rivers in high places and fountains 
in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And what's them people thinking? We've been there and there is none. Just trust in God. And there's going to be things that we just couldn't imagine. I will open rivers in high places, fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. So even my little old pond out in the, out in the edge of the pasture, there are going to be ducks on it again because the Lord done said so. Turn over with me to John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. And I always like to read labels, like uh, drinking water. This is bottled at the source. It's such, 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 or somewhere else. Well, if you're going to put somewhere else on there, why bother telling me where it was bottled at? Is it bottled at the source, or did you uh, ship it somewhere and then bottle it? John 7, verse 37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him drink. Let him come unto me and drink. Now, these folks over there in Isaiah, they were looking everywhere but in the right places. You talk to folks. You go to church? Oh, no, we don't. We don't do that anymore. We got a, we got other things. Uh, more things important. Well, what could that be? Jesus said, "If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink." Verse thirty-eight: He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Turn back with me to Isaiah 41, verse 19. Amy got up one morning over the summer break, and uh, I heard her walking, and I heard her come to the door, bedroom door, open it, and I was already downstairs, and we ain't got no water. And somebody's sitting out in the front yard down by the road. So I went down there, and uh, they'd found a leak on their side, thank goodness, and uh, dug up the ditch, dug up a little bit in the yard, dug up across the road, and they shot another uh, line underneath the road to where we could have water. And he said, we'll be done in just a minute. So I watched there in amazement how this guy, he was about my size, and when I first got down there, I couldn't see him. And I said, how... How deep's that hole? Three feet. And I was like, he must have been on his hands and knees. Because, uh, you know, that guy's a pretty good sized fella. Oh, then, they, then it got down to four feet and five feet. Well, uh, I'm thinking it had to be over six feet or else he was uh, stooped over pretty bad. And so in a little bit here, sure enough, they had it fixed. And uh, smoothed out the dirt, Jimmy. I mean, it was... Looking nice. Man, a few weeks later, they came back and threw some grass seed out, put some straw out. Green grass came up. I mean, it was looking wonderful. Now there's a patch of dirt there. No rain. And uh, somebody at school said, well, will it come back? No, it ain't going to come back. No. It's gone. Forget that. My, the grass I had is going to have to fill in that hole. They came looking for water, found none. And he said, if they'd just call, I'd answer. I'm going to make rivers, springs of water in those dry places. And look what else he's going to do in verse 19. Trees will be growing there. 
Uh, I don't think it's the time of year yet. Jimmy, help me out. It ain't the time of year for leaves to be falling. No. Why are leaves all in my yard? No water. Oak leaves all over the place in my in our yard because of no water. But yet he says dry land is going to be springs of water in all these evergreen trees. will be flourishing. One writer says, this part of God's answer to the poor and needy wilderness is, uh, is part of God's answer to the poor and needy wilderness of man's soul. It needs only the cleansing and refreshing rivers but the imparting of new principles for the beautifying of the lifelike trees that's growing in the desert. See, God can change nature itself. Used to be a commercial back in the day. Jen, Jen and Justin probably don't know nothing about that. You'd hear this uh, clap of thunder, and it was meddling. Was it some kind of butter? It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And uh, Mother Nature would appear. Uh, I don't believe in Mother Nature. I believe in God. And he can change nature itself if he so desires to meet our needs. All his works are going to praise him. Matter of fact, uh, the New Testament says that if we don't praise him, the, the rocks will. And as the song says, I, I don't want no rocks to cry out. For me, I want to pray, give praise to whom praise is due. So all these trees are now going to flourish where there was, were not any. And then look at verse 20. Why all this? That they may see. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. Uh, Girl at school had a St. Louis shirt on the other day. I, I didn't go into the detail I'm fixing to go in with y'all, but I said, did you, you been to St. Louis? She said, yeah. I said, did you go up in that arch? Yeah, went up to the top of it. I said, well, I've been there twice, but uh, we didn't ever go up in the arch. And this is the detail I didn't give her. And I, I think I've shared it with y'all. I've read that they built the arch to try to control the weather. Uh, all I know is the arch is still standing, and I imagine St. Louis has storms just like anybody else. And, Somebody asked me Friday, Dr. Mosley, is it going to rain tonight? I said, there's a 20% chance. And they went, <sighs> And I said, why? why? There's 80% chance that it won't. Oh, yeah. And I was like, man, I failed as a math teacher. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, there's 80% chance it won't. And guess what? I don't, I don't believe that it did. They get on the TV and radio and internet, tell us what the weather's going to do. They don't know. But why did all these things happen? Verse 20 says that they may see and know and consider and understand together that it was the Lord who did it. Now, I hear banter back and forth with the weather people. You going to give us any rain? The news guy says that. Well, maybe maybe we've got a chance. And they say these hurricanes are going to come. So it's just going to bring us all kinds of rain. And what did they put, Amy? 20% for Thursday. Whew. That means, again, 80% chance that it ain't. But they're talking it up. 
One group of writers says this, two of the greatest promises of God are that of his protection and provision. If we are believers who truly follow the Lord, he promises to protect and deliver us when any enemy attacks or oppresses us. Although God does not always deliver us from difficult circumstances, he will always deliver us through them. No matter what trial, hardship, temptation, or adversary confronts us, the Lord will protect us and give us whatsoever or what, whatever provision we need to overcome the difficult circumstance. In Romans 8, it tells us this. What's going to separate us from the love of God? And it lists a whole list of things. What shall separate us? Will tribulation, will distress, will persecution, will famine, will nakedness, peril, sword? No, it says in all these things we're made more than conquerors through him that loved us. Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. We go try to find peace. We go try to find understanding. Where's peace come from? Where's the water of life come from? There's only one source. And uh, for the most part, we put him on the back burner. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Notice that. Seek God first. Now, we might be in the category of being poor and needy, but if we seek him first, all these things. And they it's one right to put them in parentheses. Housing, food, clothing shall be added unto you. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And one last place we want to turn is uh, Hebrew. We talked about Hebrews 13 a while ago. Let's turn to Hebrews 13. And... Uh, we won't read verse 8. We done quoted it. And I think uh, it was short enough I didn't slaughter that one. Let's read verses 5 and 6 of Hebrews 13, and then, then we'll close. Let your conversation, your lifestyle, your manner of li uh, living, be without covetous, covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, it wasn't the government that did it. It wasn't our employer that did it. It wasn't the church that did it. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what, shall, what, men, what man shall do unto me. They came looking for water. They was looking at the wrong source. Solomon tried to find peace contentment he was looking at the wrong source as the song says the only real peace that we're going to have is in the Lord the only water of life that we can find is in the Lord and all the blessed promises again that we've read about tonight where there's barren places 
it will start flourishing. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, tonight for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are this evening. Lord, uh, have your own way in each one of our hearts, lives, during this invitation time. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as... uh,